1973. Foreman arrived with a fearsome reputation. And what followed was devastating. Knocked down six times in just two rounds, Smoking Joe lost both his title and his reputation. I got stopped, I got uh, hit with a good shot, and uh, I got cut, so they stopped the fight, you know what I mean? But uh, back to the drawing board. The drawing board meant another fight with his nemesis, Muhammad Ali. They met again in 1974, a disappointing fight that Ali won on points. But Ali then beat George Foreman to regain his heavyweight title, setting the stage for a third and deciding fight with Joe Frazier. Would you believe I'd beat Frazier and beat Norton and their god Foreman? Now I would be the champion again and the world bowing and all those chumps are knocking on my door. Here I am. The venue for their decider was Manila in the Philippines. But the animosity was deeper. This time Ali's insults took on an ugly connotation. This time there was real contempt. Joe felt, and not unjustifiably, that Ali demeaned him, and in many ways he did. Ali frequently mocked his opponents. Joe Frazier is so ugly, his face should be donated to the Bureau of Wildlife. The one time he went over the line, and he did it several times, was with Joe Frazier. The first fight, he branded Joe an Uncle Tom. The second fight, he called him ignorant. The third fight, he labeled Joe a gorilla with all of the ugly racial stereotyping that that involves. Man's too slow. Man's too ugly. Man can't think. He's a Geechee. He's some snuffs. There he is, Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier. I can't. Uh see uh, anywhere I look like any gorilla, I just overlook all of it anyway, because uh, when a guy speak upon another man like that, uh, he's not quite sure himself. More than anything, Frazier wanted revenge. Unwilling and unable to compete with Ali's razor-sharp tongue, his sole aim was to let his fists talk for him. It's not gonna be a first round knockout. If it gets to that point, I want to go over and help him up. You know what I'm saying? I want to take him to the distance. I want to take him to the bridge. 15 rounds, I want to beat on him. I figure, like, when you knock a man out, you take him out of his misery. Suffer him a little bit, beating on him, that hurts him more than anything in the world. He might be Joe Frazier in the ring, but Joe was too pure a fighter to be psychologically dominated. I usually don't get involved with, let's say, that kind of warfare. Uh, I feel like this. He's another man, and only one way to think. That's to win. Don't pay attention to what he's saying. Uh, I think the main thing about it, that he would like for his opponent to get all riled up and get carried away. That way, you kind of forget what your plans are. The fight would go down as perhaps the most brutal heavyweight encounter of all time. The, the oddity of that fight was that it took place indoors. It was at Aranet Arena. Tin roof, hot, clean lights. I don't know how both fighters survived the fight. That was an incredible fight. Neither guy was as good as he had once been, but their downward curves intersected at just the right point. It was a historic battle fought in really death-like heat and humidity. With a mixture of shock and awe, the world watched two aging gladiators exchange devastating blows for 14 rounds. Jerry Eisenberg had a wonderful uh, line about that fight. He said they weren't fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. They were fighting for the heavyweight championship of each other. Frazier had been going blind in his left eye since 1962. 
and in the final rounds, Ali closed his right eye, plunging him into darkness. Frazier's trainer, Eddie Futch, had seen enough, stopping the fight at the end of the 14th round, just when many felt Ali had been seconds away from retiring on his stool. This eye was closed, so then I could have got hurt. He said, no, let's stop it. No, 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 no. I said, come on, Eddie. no, no, no. But then we didn't know that Muhammad wasn't going to come out. That's not our job. Our job is concerned with our going. And he knew that I couldn't see out of, out of this eye. This one was closing. So he called the shot. My job was to fight. His job was the trainer. You know what I mean? And so if he had seen something that I didn't see, that, that was the place to call the shot. Frazier always maintained he was prepared to risk death to beat Ali that morning in Manila. He was terrific as a fighter, you know, there's no doubt about it. And with the thrill in Manila, he personified that. Uh, being able to uh, demonstrate, you know, his ability to go in there and fight and give it his all. It was a defeat Frazier never recovered from. He fought just twice more, finally retiring in 1981. But it was still the shadow of Ali, now in deteriorating health, who dominated his thoughts. Well, I talked to Joe, and Joe said, look, he said, I can't talk. Look at him, he can't talk at all. See, he said, God don't like that. God don't like ugly. He talked about everybody. Now, look at him. Frazier retained that bitterness towards Ali for the rest of his life. He retired into relative anonymity to help run his own gym in Philadelphia for several decades, until he faced a battle against liver cancer at the age of 67. He lost his final fight to the disease in November 2011. In poor health himself, Ali attended the funeral. God bless your spirit, Joe. You know what I mean? And I know that the Lord is welcoming you, that another gladiator has came. Another one has walked into the doors and the portals of heaven, and your spirit and your legacy will live on. He was a great man. I love him, and I love his family, and I think all of them in America can join hands together and applaud Joe Smoking Joe Frazier, a true American hero. Uncomplicated but dignified, a brutal and intense fighter. Frazier won 32 of his 37 fights, 27 of them by knockout. The only men to ever beat him were Ali and George Foreman. Smoking Joe Frazier so often had to share the limelight, but he was a true great champion in his own right. The time is near, the time is here to check my hopes and prepare to take the dare. It's time to climb right through them roads and face a man who has a plan and states that 